morning. morning. It's good to see each of you out today. It's a beautiful day in the Lord to come and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm honored to see you. I pray that if you're new among us, that uh, we'd like to have your name and a little information to be able to pray for you. And if you wouldn't mind filling out the perforated edge, we would enjoy that very much. A few announcements that we have this morning is uh, pray for New Hope Church this week, our sister church. Uh, choir practice will be today at 5 o'clock. Trustees will meet today at 4 o'clock. Our prayer list will be purged this week, so please, ha please have your names in by Wednesday. Uh, see Sister Wanda. Pool party at Anderson Dean Park, July the 12th. Uh, Churchwide, anybody that wants to come, uh, you invite others to come. And we'll have a, a good time July the 12th from 6 to 9 p.m. Vacation Bible School starts uh, the 14th and goes through the 19th. There is a pre-registration form in the back. Sister Judy would like, if any of you would like to go ahead and pre-register uh, somebody, some of the children, that uh, that'd be a head start. So it's in the back, and so you do that. Uh, open prayer times on Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock if you're not busy and you have a moment to come at 9 o'clock, come and pray with us. We get together and have a time of prayer for our families, our community, and uh, our country. Also, we have a check here for $1,000. It is uh, from Miss Dorothy's estate, Miss Dorothy Collier. Uh, I want to continue to remember that family. And she did designate this to go to the kitchen fund, and uh, that alone. And so... Uh, we appreciate Sister Dorothy. Don't forget our ongoing ministries, Bags of Hope Food Pantry, Operation Christmas Child, Shoebox Ministry, and our Box Tops for Education. Uh, we were down in Sunday school this morning. We were back up a little bit last week, down again this week. But this is that time of year that people are out of school, or the children are out of school, and there are some people traveling, so let's continue to pray about that. But if you are not in Sunday school, uh, I know you get a blessing from it to come and join us. In that time, uh, we get into the scriptures and just go verse by verse, and it'd be quite an honor to have you to be a part of us. Our scripture verse of the week, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, Ephesians 2 and 1. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless our time together this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne once again, we just want to take that moment to thank you for the stillness of the moment. Father, I pray right now that you would minister to our hearts today. Father, we lift up those on our prayer list, those that are in need around us. Father, our families, our community, and our country. And Father, we just thank you for being the loving, kind, gracious God that you are. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the outpouring of your blood. Father, that we could have our sins forgiven, that we could have eternal life. Father, I pray today that if there's anyone among us that's never trusted Jesus, that's never been set free, that's never been delivered, that today might be the day. Father, we also want to thank you for this great country in which we live. Let us be reminded of the liberties and the freedom that we have in being in such a blessed country. We can only thank you, God. We do thank you. And we ask your blessings continually upon our country, upon our leaders. And Father, we ask now that you forgive us where we fail you. We pray your blessings upon the church. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Now, we do have one in the house. It was about a week or so ago, I think. Sister Wanda Long was 95. Is that correct? 95. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, real quickly, please save all canned food, cans, and glass jars, jelly jars, baby food jars, pickle jars, for Bible school crafts, box located in the back. So remember that. Jelly jars, baby food jars, and pickle jars. But empty them. 
<laughs> All right, Brother Ronnie, you come lead us, brother. Let's have a word of, let's have a time of greet. Get up and let people know that you're glad they're here, honored to be in the house of the Lord, to come and worship together today. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's all stand for the Star Spangled Banner, please. Thank you very much. Let's turn to your hymn books to 422. Goodness and mercy. 
Singing it, everyone. This will be an offertory. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
253, please. is going to sing a song now that guarantee none of you heard. This is the first time we've ever sang it. But the author and writer of this song, the name of the song is This is America, is right here in this audience. Fred Wilson. Would you stand up, please? And since it's a, like for America, and this is close to July the 4th, would y'all please stand?
Thank you for that beautiful song, Brother Fred. Amen. Amen. This morning, turn with me to the Psalm 85. Psalm 85. We're going to read the scripture. I'm going to have a word of prayer, and Brother Jim's going to show us a video. Psalm 85. We'll begin with verse 1. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thy anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and her land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Let's pray, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we humble our hearts as your children before your throne once again, we just want to thank you for your goodness and mercy. We want to thank you for your loving kindness. We want to thank you because he lives. We have this great privilege of being where we are today. While we have the great privilege of gathering ourselves together as your children in this great, awesome, mighty country. Father, we just thank you and praise you for all that you've done and pray that you'll continue to hear our cries. Father, I pray that you have prepared each one's heart now. Lord, as always, I pray that we have come to that place right now knowing that we're in your very presence, that we are on holy ground, that, Father, we have laid aside all those things that would interfere with what we have come to do today. That is to worship you, to hear from you, to seek your guidance, to pursue you for our life's journey. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray right now that you will hide me and use me. Father, cleanse me as the vessel that only you can by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Use me as your mouthpiece today for thine glory. Father, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. And I ask once again, Lord, today, that if there be anybody here that's never trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray today that, Father, they would come to that acknowledgement of what you've done on the cross of Calvary and shedding your blood for their sin, that they would be willing to confess, to repent, and invite you to be Lord of their lives. Father, if there's anyone here today that might need to move their membership. Whatever it might be, Lord, we commend it all into your hands and ask that your will be done. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we know that Israel had gone into the promised land, had experienced uh, so many wonderful and mighty things, and I don't doubt that Israel didn't sing and weren't singing 
uh, songs just as we sang this morning as to what Brother Fred just wrote. Uh, but yet things didn't continue to always go in that fashion. Something happened as we're looking into our scripture here that tells us that sin had turned into iniquity. Sin itself is missing the mark and that we all miss the mark in being sin sinners, uh, just meaning that Romans tells us, no, not one is righteous, that all have come short of the glory of God. But then once we trust in Jesus Christ, we know that if we sin, we let that go unchecked, it turns into what is called in the scriptures transgression. And transgression is that place to where God has drawn the line and says, don't go over my line. This is the fence. Don't go over the fence. Stay where you belong. And if we let that go unchecked, then what happens is it turns into iniquity. That's what we read here in verse 2. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Iniquity had run deep. Iniquity is that thing that is uh, premeditated choice. What premeditated choice is, is that continuation of sinning, knowing that you're sinning and being unwilling to change it, being unwilling to repent. And that's what had happened here. And so God had an answer for their iniquity. And that answer was his judgment, his wrath. His fury. So what caused God's judgment on this nation? First of all, when you look back at the scriptures, we know that child sacrifice caused a part of this wrath and fury from God. God did not approve of it. In today's world, it's known as abortion. Now you have the free will to decide how you feel about that, and that is your free will choice that God gives you. But God's word says that that is wrong. It's absolutely wrong, and for us to, uh, uh, as I talked about last Sunday night, the difference between tolerating something and approving something, there's a vast difference in that. And so we do not approve of that being God's children. Not only was there child sacrifice, but there was homosexuality that was given free reign during that time. Oh, yes, even back during that time, there was homosexuality. And the reins had been turned loose. You know, if you're driving a team and you turn the Reins loose, just throw them out that the horses just run wild, don't they? There was also pornography that was being elevated. And so the national revival had taken place under many prior to this time, under King David, under Hekaziah, Jehoshaphat, Josiah, but it had not come to take place under Nehemiah yet. And so as we read this psalm here, music was a big part of celebrating their upcoming holiday uh, many times. And we learn through the scriptures that these psalms were their hymns. And they used many of their psalms to celebrate this time. Music was an important role that God had during the Old Testament time. And Jewish people would go up to Jerusalem, get the uh, hymns out, and certain hymns would celebrate these freedoms. And so they, like God's people today, probably wondered at times what God had in store for their nation. I mean, they were aware of the iniquity. They just let it run rapid, but they were aware of it. And I'm sure as they got their hymn books out and they began to sing, they began to reflect and reflecting, they began to wonder with the way we're heading, with the direction we're going, what's going to happen to our nation? I think people today in America are probably thinking the same thing. Years ago, there was a, an American submarine that sank off the East Coast. And as it sank, the divers went down to try to find those that were in the uh, submarine, and they dove down several hundreds of feet and, and finally found the submarine. And they were making their way around the submarine when they heard a tapping. And that tapping was Morse code. And the Morse code they were sending out is this. They were inside, down in the depths of the sea, in the darkness, trapped. And the Morse code was, is there any hope? I think many people in America today are crying that same thing out from our hearts. There's a Morse code going out. 
Is there any hope for America in the condition that we have allowed it to get in? And I say we because I think you and I are responsible, friends, as God's children, for not standing up for what's really right. I believe that. And so I think God's judgment, fury, and wrath uh, will come if we don't do something. And there's some things that we can do. We're going to talk about in just a few minutes a role that you and I need to play in seeing that God's wrath, judgment, and fury don't come in the sense that it can come. Now, there may be, to some extent, many of us think that there's some wrath and judgment of God being poured out, but we haven't seen the wrath and judgment of God yet, friends. But is there any hope for America? And I say yes. We all know what's being written. We know what's being taught. We know how things are changing. I share with the congregation last Sunday night, I believe it was, or maybe Wednesday night, about uh, two weeks ago, about a pastor down in Cleveland, Tennessee. He went to the podium, to the sacred place to where God's word is to be spoken, and he spoke on LGBT, he spoke on homosexuality. He called Cracker Barrel within a couple days and asked Cracker Barrel down in Cleveland, Tennessee about having a church event. Somebody had gone to Cracker Barrel and told him about him preaching what he preached on and they denied him the right to have a church event at the Cracker Barrel on behalf of it. Many of you probably heard about that. The Ten Commandments. You know, YouTube kind of uh, screens things and the Ten Commandments, they felt was uh, too immoral that they had to put it into the category of pornography just so people couldn't see it on YouTube. I mean, there's so many wild things happening, and we ask, is there any hope for America? And I say, yes, there's hope. I believe that. President Washington said this, it would be impossible to govern rightly without God in the Bible. John Adams said it would be impossible to govern without the Bible and the Ten Commandments. The Pilgrim Chartage of 1620 had a purpose, and I'm quoting, to advance the Christian religion to the glory of God Almighty. Before the pilgrims arrived below the deck on the Mayflower, they signed the Mayflower Compact which revealed their intent for the glory of God. Andrew Jackson said the Bible is the rock upon which our republic rests. And when the Declaration of Independence 243 years ago and the Constitution of 232 years ago on September the 17th, and so it is said that uh, there's an article I brought with me from AFA Journal, it's American Family Association, and Steve McDowell says uh, in his article he'd like for people to take a guess at how long a constitution or a document of this nature really took place or held up. He says on average, how long is the lifespan of a written national constitution? 100 years, 50 years, or 30 years? The answer, according to three scholars at the University of Chicago Law School, may surprise us. 17 years. And yet we're about to celebrate 243 years of our independence. He goes on to say Americans must appreciate the durability of the U.S. Constitution, especially as the nation approaches its 232nd anniversary on September the 17th and the 243rd anniversary of our Declaration of Independence on July the 4th. He goes on to say that he is convinced that these founding documents have endured because they are based squarely on yet another document that has endured even longer. Would anybody like to guess what that document might be? The Bible, the Word of God. That's what our nation was founded on. That's what made our nation such a great nation. That is what made this place such a wonderful place to live. He says the Declaration of Independence is America's founding covenant. It declares why we became a nation. The Constitution is the bylaws of this new nation, so you have to look at them together. The Declaration begins by saying, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men 
are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now that statement is full of biblical ideals, he says. First, the founders recognize the absolute truth exists. That by what they wrote in these two documents, they realized that absolute truth exists because it was founded upon the word of God. That there was right and wrong, that there was moral and immoral, that there was legal and illegal. These emanated from the creator. This is a foundation, foundational idea of our nation. There is absolute truth we can know, and it comes from the creator. How true that is. And so is it possible for America to be restored as a nation with Christian ideals that are dominant? Of course it is. Of course it is. Can this ruin be stopped? Yes, it can. But it takes something on our part. Uh, I'd like to use a little illustration if I might. Uh, I have a pond out at our house, down behind the house in the lower part of the valley down behind the house and over the course of the last three or four, four or five years it created a leak in the dam and it would slowly go down to just a certain level and then after a while it got to where it would go down to an even lower level and then after uh, another time span it would go down to even a greater lower level. And so I talked to Brother Ronnie about coming out and looking at it and fixing it. And uh, so we got this big rain here a week or two ago, and Brian was up here. Uh, you all remember Brian from Western Kentucky. He was up here. We walked down to the pond. I mean, it was just uh, up to the bank. And, and when we walked down right in the middle of the pond bank, there was a, a really a like a, a tornado type. It was just, I mean, the hole had just gotten so big, I guess, in the dam. It was just, I mean, it was just sucking it out. And that's what happens when iniquity comes in. It's just let go and let go, and it just gets bigger and bigger and begins to cause more and more damage. And I said, I've got to get this thing fixed, or I'm not going to have any water in my pond for my fish. I won't be able to go fishing. And so what I done is I went up to the uh, little shed that we had there, and I rolled out a, got out a big old roll of plastic, heavy meal plastic, and it was literally about two-thirds of the row, and I started cutting off big pieces, and I'd pull it all out, and then I'd kind of wad it up. And I began to stuff it down in that hole. <laughs> and it uh, wasn't doing much good. <laughs> so I cut off another piece. I had my big, long uh, pole, and I'd stuff it down in there. I used that whole row. I got it slowed down, but I didn't get it to stop. I got it slowed down, but I couldn't get it to stop. It's still, still flowing. Brother Ronnie came out just a day or two ago and looked at it, and he said, uh, Brother Lynn, we'll let her get down here. Uh, Brother Ronnie's more of an expert on this than I am. He said, we'll let her get down here to where it needs to get to, and uh, when it gets down to the level that we can work with it, he said, we'll come back and we'll take this plastic out. That plastic needs to come out. Sin needs to be removed, friends. He said, we'll take this plastic out. And he said, there's some stuff and things that we'll do to try to fix this to where it'll be the way it is. Is it possible to restore America? Yes. But God's people have to play a role in it. See, it takes effort on our part to doing something. I went down and done what I'd done and got it slowed down. But then Brother Ronnie is going to come out and we're going to get together and do what will hopefully stop it. Yes, it can be restored, but God's people have a role to play in rediscovering the greatness of God. First of all, I, I, I've put down five things here. I think first of all is to understand where our, and what our nation was founded upon. And I think everybody understands that. I think everybody understands that our nation was founded upon the word of God. It was founded upon the absolute truth that you and I should follow. And with that understanding, we should play a role in teaching our children the truth of the gospel. 
And don't misunderstand what I'm about to say here. Education is great. Bands, being in the band, that's marvelous. That's wonderful. Playing ball is a wonderful activity. And you can go on. Free time on video games is not so bad if it's monitored. TV time. And we can mention all these things, but what they need more is the education of what our country was founded upon, and that is the Word of God. What they need the most is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what our children need today. Our younger generation need the gospel. They need Jesus Christ. They need the understanding of knowing that it was through that absolute truth of God's word that our nation was founded. That that is why we are the great country, the great nation that we are in America today. And God has blessed us just like he did Israel and how they went to the Psalms and sang on many occasions, I know, I believe with all my heart that they went on many occasions and sang these songs or hymns and celebrated the freedom and the liberty that God had brought them out of from being down in Egypt and how he had brought them through the wilderness and they crossed the Jordan River and they went in and they overtook the uh, Amorites and the uh, Midianites and the Pezzarites and Jebusites and the Canaanites and all these people. But then they, as we've been studying on Sunday night and Wednesday night, they began to adapt to the ways of those that they didn't dispose of or, or, or they didn't separate themselves in a fashion and they, and they just began to associate with them. And then we know what happened. The third thing is to grow in Christ-like character. We must live as God-like children. That's what I mean by that. And, and I think there was a good illustration of that just a week or two ago, I don't know if any of you heard it or saw it, but it was, uh, I, I don't even know where they were, but Eric Trump and his wife were somewhere, and they were walking through a place, and somebody spit right in his face. Now, why do you bring that story up, brother? I bring that story up because of this. He didn't re retaliate in any way. He didn't say anything bad in any way. He didn't press any charges. To me, that's God-like character. That regardless of how mean, how ugly, that people oppose the ways of God, that we are to have a God-like character. God-like character is knowing that we live our lives in the frame of knowing that when we, being children of God, love one another and are to encourage one another, that when one falls, we don't start uh, criticizing. We don't start running and talking about it. We run to them, but we run to them with open arms of love. Letting them know that we love them. These are things that you and I, as God's children, play a role in in getting this tide turned. Fourth is to participate in the Great Commission. Let me back up talking about Christ-like uh, character. Let me ask you a question. If you're a soldier in a field with another soldier, and we're all soldiers together as God's children. And a soldier gets wounded. Are you going to run off and just leave him there? No. No, you're going to go to his aid. You're going to go to her aid. You're going to do everything you can do possibly to help them out of that situation. Uphold them, uplift them, encourage them. And then to participate in the Great Commission. And many of you are doing that, and praise God. But are we as a nation doing that? Are we as a nation doing that? Are we as a church whole doing that? Are we participating in the Great Commission? Are we living our lives in God-like character with the understanding of what our nation was founded on, with the understanding of knowing the freedoms and the liberties that we experience in this nation? Are we living out that Great Commission? Are we literally telling people by our lives by our testimony, by our witness, are we letting people know that the absolute truth of God is that thing which is most necessary for their lives as well as it is ours? Filling the Great Commission. Going about living that life of Christ. And then last is to just simply stand for the truths, the biblical truths in our community. 
And this has nothing to do with Bible, but I thought I would use it as an illustration. You know, sometimes we just need to take a stand. And last week we came to the prayer time together, or maybe it was the week before last, I don't really remember. But I was telling the guys, I said, I'm upset. I am so frustrated. What's wrong, Brother Lynn? I said, well, I said, I'll tell you. I said, my neighbor came over yesterday, and I said, my neighbor asked me if I knew that my address on my uh, my mailing address is going to be changed. I said, what do you mean being changed? He said, we're going to change your address. I said, for what? And so she just gave me this spiel about being, and she said, uh, I contacted somebody, they contacted somebody, they said call the sheriff. So I said, this is ridiculous. They won't change my mailing address. I said, who's going to pay me for the checks I've had made that I write to people? Who's going to pay me for the uh, uh, mailing and uh, Label addresses that I, who, who's going, how, how I'm going to contact all these people that I have <clears throat> my address to and change all that. Well, they didn't care. Long story short, I called Brother Ernie Kelty. Brother Ernie told me, he said, Brother Lynn, he said, don't blame me. He said, don't hold against me. He said, I have nothing to do with this. I said, I'm not blaming you, Brother Ernie. I said, it just makes no sense to me. They want to change my address from 2367 to 4267. But they're saying that number will make a difference for 911 for some reason. But my, the point I'm trying to make, and then I ended up calling the judge. Didn't do any good. <laughs> Didn't do a bit of good. But what my point is, I, 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 express, I stood up for what I thought was wrong. But how much more important is it, is it for you and I to stand up for what we know is wrong? How much more important is this for to stand up uh, to those in a loving way that are opposing the absolute truth of God? How much more important is it for us to stand up and to help somebody realize what this country was truly founded on, being the children of God? And we do, my friends. Listen, I've told you on many occasions, God has blessed my wife and I and, and me uh, maybe just a little more by being able to travel to some places that I've got to travel without her. And we've been to several places, and, and I know that some of you have been uh, travelers. And I know that you would confirm this. There is no place in this world that I've been, I've not been a lot of places, but I've been a few places, but there is no place in this world like America. No place. She is the greatest country in the world. And there's a reason that she's the greatest country in the world. That is because God has had his hand upon those that have accepted and understood the foundational truth of why the country was founded. It was by the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution that, as we read, go hand in hand upon the authority of God's word that makes her a great nation. And that you and I have been able to experience the many blessings in life that we get to experience. My friends, listen to me. I went to Haiti in 91, and some of you in here have been to Haiti, been to Romania and Guatemala and several other places probably. Many of you may not know. Do you know how awful it is to go to an a, a ocean line and see for maybe two or three miles out into the ocean a, like a line is being drawn, and from this point on the bank out to that distance is just filth, nastiness, no pure water to drink. That's what it's like in Haiti. My friends, we have fresh water in our homes. We have so many great things in America that are being taken for granted today. So many things. But the primary thing is for us to take a role in being the children of God as our ladies, Brother Kenny and Brother Ronnie, comes today. Are you playing that role that will turn the tide? And I know that many of you sitting out there, and I do say many because I believe this, many of you can say, I am Brother Lynn. I realize what our country was founded on. I realize the importance of our need for God. I realize the importance to continue to cry out. 
just as the Israelites did when they were singing this psalm in 85. But if you're here this morning and you don't understand how precious that is, maybe you've never understood, maybe you've never come to the understanding of how wonderful it is to have given your life to Jesus Christ because he died for your sins. He does make all the difference in the world. Just as he has made a difference in our country, he will make a difference in your life. Jesus Christ makes a difference. And if you need to come to Jesus this morning, don't put it off. Don't let it be like my pond dam. Don't let it become such a vacuum that it will just suck you dry. That your heart will become so hard that it will be too late one day. 2 Corinthians 6 says that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. And maybe you need to come today for salvation. Maybe you need to today come today for membership. Maybe you need to come today and just talk to God about the role that you're playing that will make such a significant difference in the great country in which God has blessed you with. But whatever it might be that God has spoke to you about today, don't rob yourself of the blessing. You come to Jesus. You talk to Jesus about it. As we sing, what number, brother? 325. 325. Would you stand, please?